Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Samara, aka Night American Princess. If you are new to this channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. But if you are part of the family, you already know what to do. You have to keep on watching. What's up? Hey yo, Ren, turn that up. She said, Show me some affection. Video guys I'm going to tell you guys my journey in pharmacy school and some tips and tricks to get you accepted into your pharmacy program and some things that you can do to prepare for pharmacy school so let's get into it all right so number one number one thing that I recommend anyone who is a religious person um, I am a religious person so I always try to inform that have faith in God first before anything and let him handle all of your decisions and just basically the transition of you going into pharmacy school so that's number one okay number two so how I got started with pharmacy school I got accepted into pharmacy school of fall 2018 so dang that's a while ago y'all oh my gosh okay so <laughs> Um, pretty much what I did was I prepared the whole year before 2018 so what I did was the spring semester of 2017 I actually started looking at some Kaplan um, I don't know why I want to say Naplex so bad but it's not the Naplex but the PCAT I was looking at some PCAT books and I will definitely put the PCAT that I was looking at it was the Kaplan book I wish I had it but I sold it um, because I didn't need it anymore but basically I reviewed the Kaplan book a lot of you guys reached out to me and asked the same question on how to study for the um, Kaplan and what I can tell you is basically is first things first go look at the programs that actually do accept the PCAT scores nine out of ten some of the programs that you do apply for are not going to really care so much about the PCAT score the PCAT is really so much of a standardized test um, just to kind of boost you up for say it's almost like the ACT and the um, SAT in my opinion um, it's just about what you know and what you don't know but honestly start browsing start window shopping the programs that you're interested in and some of those programs may not even care or accept the PCAT score they may just be more so curious about your GPA status of all your um, math and sciences when I took the PCAT I took it twice so the first time I did pretty well I really forgot what I made on that score but I did very well to where I didn't have to repeat it but I felt that my score wasn't good enough because I wanted to get into some really really good programs but I ended up wasting money and actually didn't do well the second round because I didn't really study for it I kind of just played with it so don't do what I do actually study for it and things like that now the first round I did study for it and what I did was that whole summer of 2017 I literally went into the paint I made sure that I was studying at least Monday through Fridays I had the weekends off I literally had maybe about five days out the month of a day off just to myself where I can just kind of enjoy myself whatever the case may be but I was strictly to that Naplex book <laughs> guys I don't know why the PCAT book okay so don't worry about the Naplex you'll worry about the Naplex after pharmacy school but you're trying to get into pharmacy school so don't worry about the Naplex there are some tutors that you can buy but I don't believe in buying a tutor when everything is free so if you are hesitant on physics or any science um, courses within that book I suggest you to go to your um, advisor or some tutor that specializes in that course so you can get some more assistance and things like that because honestly when it comes to the PCAT I remember strictly nothing but math and science it was a little bit on the English and things like that but English wasn't a weak point for me so I didn't really look at the English section too much it was more so the math and the science so make sure that you're taking your math and your science classes seriously number three so number three what I did after I basically got the score that I wanted I already had five schools that I wanted to attend so it's based off your preference I had five HBC HBCU pharmacy programs that I was interested into because I did go to an undergraduate um, 
HBCU. So I just wanted to keep the tradition going and I just love my HBCU. So why not go to the HBCU? So um, I picked five schools. Now you don't have to choose five schools, but I did. And I wanted to have different options. And these five different schools and these programs were within different states. Wanting to see a different atmosphere, a different environment. And plus we're young. So like use the opportunity to kind of adventure out if you have the funds. So and even if you don't, still do it while you can. Because there's still some um, scholarship opportunities that you can get from the program. As well as scholarship opportunities from your school. Some of the schools that I did apply for didn't go through the FarmCast application process. Some of them just went directly through their website. So make sure that you know that, okay, this school may not have to go through FarmCast, which is, I really like that idea because you don't have to go through all of those extra funds, extra fees, all the extra stuff that FarmCast kind of has going on when it comes to just the school just doing their own thing they kind of just have like a one standard application process and then that's it. So I made sure that my schools were either on FarmCast or not and I was really active. I really talked to the advisors at these schools. I really made sure that my name was made aware to my to these advisors at the programs and as well as the director of the programs and things like that. So with that being said, I did send out emails to <laughs> the directors and you guys don't have to do that, but I did that just to kind of introduce myself and to ask some questions that weren't asked on their factual sheets that they have going on on their websites. So what I mean by that is basically just showing that you're eager, that you're motivated, you're a driven student who is very excited to join their program. And that just on, honestly gives them the thing of, wow, like we want this student. Because like when you reach out to the directors and things like that of the program, it just kind of gives them a relief because they don't have to necessarily go through your profile. They can just say, wow, this student is really active and wants to know a little bit more of our program. How about I look at her application and let's pull her up and get her an interview. It's almost like you're getting an interview, but you don't really know that you're getting an interview. If that makes sense. I don't think it makes sense. Sent out emails, a standard email to everyone. I kind of introduced myself, maybe a position of what I hold in my undergrad. So at the time I was holding a presidential um, status over a club and I was a part of a program. A really um, distinguished program and I kind of just introduced myself and things like that and I asked some questions regarding to that program make sure that it's within that program and make sure that it's not on the website so if you ask a question saying um hello my name is such and such and I am the blah 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 and I am applying for fall 2023 I have a, I wanted to um, you know basically you introducing yourself you're letting them know who you are and then you go into saying that you know I just wanted to let you know how admirable your um, program is but I had a quick I had a few couple of questions that I didn't see stated on the factual sheets list online so you can go into your questions make sure that your questions are not on that sheet because if it is you kind of just look stupid so not to be like funny or anything but just kind of make sure that all of your questions are not already answered so when you get to that um, email it's not like they can basically say oh yeah it's already on the email because then that kind of gives you a bad look that you're not very detailed and they are looking for students who are detailed and who have a quick eye because you're about to be a pharmacist so everything is going to be under you so they want to make sure that the students that they are accepting are students that are going to be aware of small detail and things like that so just be sure to just look at all of that number four the next thing that i did while preparing for pharmacy school is pretty much making sure that i had three solidified recommendation letters um, from three credible people and when i say by credible people yes your professors yes your advisors and things like that or even your pharmacists if you're a pharmacy tech or things like that but i honestly made sure that my three recommendation letters came from people who were really good at making recommendation letters it's okay if you um have to write your recommendation letter because like honestly some professors or some people in general they will be happy to give you that um recommendation letter especially if you're a good student but sometimes some people don't know what to say in a recommendation letter and a recommendation letter really tells 
the people who are basically interviewing you what type of student or what type of individual you are. So it's very important to get a um, recommendation letter from people who are really good at it. And if they're not, you know, it's always okay to kind of suggest and say, hey, can I add some few things to your recommendation letter? And But make sure that you let them know so there's no like confusion or like, oh my gosh, like I didn't say that, whatever like that. For five, the next thing that I did pretty much was, after that, I just applied. I completed all of my um, application process. I um, sent in the fees. I did the letter. The letter is very important, especially on FarmCast. And if your school doesn't go through the FarmCast application process, it's, it's very important that you write a letter because you do have to write a letter. I'm not sure what the letter was about. If you guys are in the process, please let me know what the letter is about. But I think the letter was something about why did you choose pharmacy or what made you basically choose the profession of pharmacy. I think it was one of those. Make sure that you get someone who is very, 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 very good in English or who is a tutor in English so you can get your letter um just basically revised and reviewed as much as you can because you don't want to make that simple mistake to where everything is so good but then your letter is just like uh, you want to make sure everything is perfect like you want everything to be just fine so just make sure that everything is checked at least two twi two times or three times not just once two times or three times making sure your grammar is okay making sure that your um, punctuations are straight all of that make sure everything is good overall like how i just got accepted into pharmacy schools i just really prayed and i manifested but i just really prayed i prayed so that man above god himself because honestly i <laughs> i don't i can't tell you guys what are some things that helps me get in because god got me in but what I can tell you is what I did do to get in. I made sure that my applications and things of that nature were up to par. And I also made sure once I sent out those applications, I sent all of the advisors, like I told you guys previously, an updated email, or I called them to ask them about the application status of my application. And that just kind of shows them that, hey, you're very you know, eager, you're motivated, you're driven. And they always, 10 times out of 10, they're gonna ask for your name. And they're going to remember your name because they're going to be like, hey, this person called in on their application. They want to know the status and things like that. Um, when it comes to your grades, now, um, when I got into pharmacy school, my GPA was a 3.7. But I know some people who got in with a 2.5. Don't take it as your GPA is like the number one thing that's going to get you accepted. It's not. Your number one thing that's gonna get you accepted, in my opinion, is your involvement with the school. Yes, education, your grades are very important, but they wanna see what type of individual are you. Are you someone who's into research? Are you someone who is active in the community? Because overall, as a doctor, you have to be basically versatile in everything else besides just education. So be focus and not just your education but also try to be active in many different organizations on your campus that's health related and that's probably not even health related at all try to apply to many different undergraduate health programs try to get involved as much as you can because that gives you more things to talk about in your interview okay do not do not do not do not do not do not focus just on your GPA because the GPA is, yes, the GPA is the old, I wouldn't even say the overall thing, but yes, it's something that's going to give you that ticket to get in for an interview, but it may not get you all the way in to get accepted into the program. So if your GPA is very low at this moment, don't get discouraged. Try to take some courses, especially in those um, science and math based because your pharmacy programs are going to focus on that overall GPA. Now, try to stay focused in that area and try to retake as many classes as you can, if possible, or just take some science or math classes that can help um, 
can basically leverage your GPA up to a 3.0 or more or whatever the case may be. But don't take your GPA if it is low as like this is the end of my life or whatever the case may be because you are destined to be a pharmacist. If you said to yourself right now before you selected my video that you want to be a pharmacist, we're sticking with you're being a pharmacist is no way about that okay so don't even think that you're not good enough because your gpa no that's not that's not the case that's pretty much how i got going with pharmacy school i prepared a year in advance the reason why i did that was because i know so many people did it like the year of and they had like so much stress on them they had to study and do all that extra stuff to get prepared for the pcat then they had to like hurry up and apply and like do their letter no i just wanted to get the whole shebang out the way i just kind of wrote the letter as much as i could and got it revised so when it came time to me submitting all of my stuff all i literally had to do was just upload everything just pay my fees and my dues and then that was pretty much it I didn't have to do all that extra stuff last minute things I didn't have to go through all that so I just advise you guys to like set up everything that you need to do a year in advance if possible because it just runs a lot more smoother for you guys and things like that I'm super excited for you guys to get accepted and for you guys to start your journey on to pharmacy school like I said before I hope this video has helped you to understand some things and I hope I gave you guys enough tips and tricks on to get accepted into pharmacy school if you guys want a part two to this video just like this video as well as comment some questions or things that you guys are curious about because I know you guys have a lot of questions and I had so many questions when I was in you guys' position so I understand truly. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're a part of the family, you already know what to do. Just keep on, keep on watching my videos. And guys, we are on the way to 2K. So just keep on rolling with your girl. Peace.